Good morning. You are welcome to another edition of Import Expo Platform, Facebook Live on Three Team Page Trade Academy. And my name is Dele, Dele Ayimibo. We continue our conversation from where we stop. Where we stop before now was uh, cosmetics. We are still discussing regulatory issues and guidelines. We started with drug, with food. I've discussed food. Um, I'm currently discussing. Sorry, I'm trying to find a better way to adjust my camera. I'm currently discussing um, the general guideline. That's what I'm discussing today. General guideline. So I've talked about if I'm importing to Nigeria, food, drug, and cosmetics, and these are controlled by NAVDAC because that's regulatory agencies. But what I'm discussing today is on, um, it's not on the regulatory agency, it's on general regulation. And this is very important. This is very important because, this is very important because we're discussing general regulation, just general regulation, just general regulation. What do I mean by general regulation? I mean, regulation that applies to every product irrespective of what you are importing. You know, I've discussed regulation with respect to manufactured products that are not food or drug or cosmetics. And that is regulated by Sun Cap in Nigeria. Most products important in Nigeria are regulated by Sun. I've also discussed regulation as it relates to food, drug, and cosmetics. Now, today I'll be looking at regulation, general regulation. By general regulation, I mean general regulation, irrespective of what you're importing, you must do what I'm going to talk about now. For the other one I've spoken about, you don't have to do all of them. We don't have to do all of them. For what we're talking about, before, we don't have to do all of them. In the sense that you have to, I mean, if you are, for example, if I'm importing TV, for example, I wouldn't be doing that, but I would need some. If I'm importing um, um, cups like this, That is, um, I won't be needing NAVDAC, I'll be needing sun because it's ceramic. But if I'm importing something like this, tea bag, this is food. If I'm importing this, I will not be needing sun now, I will need NAVDAC. So if I'm importing, depending on what I'm importing, what I'm importing likely, the, what I, the quality or type of what I'm importing likely tell me what happened to me at the end of the day. I am basically saying that. When you are importing into Nigeria, one of the things you must consider is the fact that there is a particular regulation you must do. Now, if you don't do that regulation, you might have ended up smuggling into Nigeria. Because if you are importing into Nigeria and regulation says all items to be imported must undergo a particular procedure, anyone that chooses not to undergo that procedure it's tantamount to smuggling. It's smuggling. Whichever way you look at it. Whichever way you look at it, the person is smuggling. So, let's get started. Let's get started. Import guideline in Nigeria. Import guideline in Nigeria. Anyone that wants to import into Nigeria must process what is called form m so all importation into nigeria must be initiated with a document called form m this form m used to be a physical document but today is no longer a physical document neither is the spiritual document <laughs> it's not a virtual document so you go to a website on that website the website is called trade.gov.ng let me just drop it for those that might be interested in that the website is called trade.gov.ng .gov.ng this website is the website of the central bank so the website designed by central bank of so the central bank of customs one of the government agencies is called the single window every Every import must pass through this channel. Now, that means if I do not register 
my phone memo on this platform and I'm importing into Nigeria, I will have been smuggling. So it is tantamount to smuggling. What you don't want to find yourself doing is smuggling because the repercussion are grievous. The challenges can be very, very bad. One of the things they can do is they can confiscate that goods, auction the goods. You might lose all your money on that item of import. That means you can't rely on what someone is telling you unless the person is of um, impeccable character and strong competence. Impe impeccable character and strong competence. Strong, strong, strong competence. The if for men for good subject to inspection shall be designated BA and those not subject to inspection shall be designated CB. Uh, as I'm talking now, I'm just thinking that maybe I should even see if I can get the the um, the formem after processing. I'm trying to um, as I'm talking, I will, I'm trying to check my system and see. I might just be able to get it for you, so that those that are listening to me will have an idea of how exactly form M look like. How exactly form M look like? How exactly? uh form m look like uh like i said form m is a document okay i've been able to see it okay yes i've seen it form m is a document that um form m is a document that is um required for the processing yeah i've seen it all right Uh, okay, yes. For me, it's a document that require that is required to process any importation into Nigeria. For me, it's a document that require to process information into Nigeria. I like to call it that it is the application form for the importation of any item to Nigeria. I like to describe it as the application form for the importation of any item to Nigeria. That means if I'm going to import into Nigeria, I must fill this form. Now, but the form M is of two types. There is one that is BA and there is one that is CB. There is one that is BA and there is one that is CB. BA, that means BA will be at the beginning of the prefix, you know. And if you are listening to this video, the document I'm about to upload will give you an insight into what I'm talking about. There is something called BA number and MF number on the form M. MF number is the general reference number. BA number is the bank reference number. That BA number or CB number is the bank reference number. And here is the deal. The BA number or CB number is the reference number of the bank, but it also indicates something. It shows whether the item being imported is subject to inspection or not. Remember Nigeria currently practice destination inspection. <laughs> that means any item you are going to bring into Nigeria must have been inspected abroad. Any item you are going to bring into Nigeria must have been inspected abroad. The implication of that is this. Any item being imported into Nigeria will have undergone, will have gone through some inspection Sorry, sorry. Currently, Nigeria practice destination inspection. That means Nigeria does not designate any agency to inspect any item being imported into its domain from abroad again. Nigeria now insists that any item being imported into Nigeria will be, will, be, will be inspected upon arrival in Nigeria. Any item being imported into Nigeria will be inspected upon arrival into Nigeria. Any item being imported will be inspected upon arrival into Nigeria. Now, what that is doing is this. Because that item is being in inspected upon arrival into Nigeria, that means that that item uh, will undergo inspection by customs, inspection by relevant agencies. Now, when custom in particular in this case, when an item is designated CB, it will not be inspected upon arrival. Uh, 
uh, import application from Nigeria. Okay, import application form in Nigeria. And that is called form M. Um, I've, uh, I've just uploaded it online on my blog, and I'm going to shortly, shortly write. I'm going to shortly, shortly, shortly drop it on the link. Um, sorry. I'm going to shortly drop it on the link. God. All right. So I just dropped it on the link. Yes, that's the link for the application form for importation. Application form for importation of uh, goods. Now, you will notice the way this document looks like. This is a form M. It has a BA number somewhere on top. Now, that prefix where you have BA, it could be CB. That prefix where you have BA, it could be CB. And beside that, you will see the bank reference number. You will see the year and you will see the numbering. So at the end of the day, you see the actual serial number, the year, the bank number, and the prefix. Now, that number is called the BA number. If this good is not subject to inspection, it will be CB. What does CB mean? CB means the good is not subject to inspection. Now, please don't ask me the, uh, what's the name? The, um, <laughs> please don't ask me the meaning or the acronym for B and CB. CBN have not given us. CBN couch it they've not given us what it means a b c b a b c b a is inspectable c is non-inspectable bank reference number bank application number the one that is not inspectable basically mean that nobody nobody is expected to do any inspection on it for example explosives if I'm bringing in explosives, or I'm bringing in machineries, or um, uh, military artilleries, it will be funny. Uh, it will be funny. Very, very, very funny. <laughs> That's a funny, dangerous. For Someone to just open container carrying this artillery to, in, to inspect. What if what is inside explodes? Do you know how to handle it? So to avoid those kind of issues, especially if I import explosive, you know, they do are used goods. And do are used goods are dangerous goods. In the sense that they can be used for good things and bad things. And some chemicals are do are used goods. So some explosive, for example can be used to blast rock, but can also be used to blast human beings in bomb making. So because of the tendencies of those uh, chemicals, because of the, uh, how dangerous they could be, they are not allowed for, they won't be inspected. Then another thing that is not subject to inspection is if a, an ambassador is importing, is bringing stuff they want to use in their embassy, an ambassador coming in, whatever he's bringing in, is not subject to inspection. Because we are friends, we shouldn't be suspe suspecting ourselves because I'm not supposed to even pay duty on those things I'm bringing in for my own use. I'm not supposed to pay duty. And because I'm not supposed to pay duty, because I'm not supposed to pay duty, the item I'm bringing in will not be inspected also. But for the other in, uh, goods like explosive, they will pay duty only that it won't be inspected. When they offload it by themselves at the destination, I guess custom will go and check whatever it is they brought in. Number three, if for mem merchandise, if for mem processing for merchandise goods is valid for 360 days, one year, and the one for Capital good is valid for 720 days. So, if I'm bringing in good into Nigeria, if I'm importing, like I said, this tea, this is a regular merchandise goods, or I'm importing um, laptop, electronic gadget, phones, anything I'm importing that is, um, what do you call it now? Anything I'm importing that is, uh, uh,
that is not big, heavy, taking time to produce and costing so much is called regular merchandise. Anything I'm importing that requires a lot of money to produce and take a long time to produce, like plain, cheap, machinery for factory, our capital goods, because they don't produce them within, sometimes take over a year to even manufacture it. Over a year to manufacture it. One. So they, and they cost a lot of money. So they are called um, uh, capital goods. Now, because capital goods take a while to raise money and to manufacture, for men is valid for two years. Regular merchandise, for men is valid for one year, uh, one year. 360 days, 720 days. Number four, the pro forma invoice is valid for 90 days. What is a pro forma invoice? A pro forma invoice is an invoice that is issued at the commencement of a trade transaction. Of a transaction, not just a trade transaction. The invoice that is issued at the commencement of a transaction is called pro forma invoice. The one issued at the end is called final invoice. The one issued at the end after the good, the consummation, the de delivery has been done and payment is expected, it's called final invoice. So, performa invoice now. If you get a performa invoice today, 90 days is enough time for the price of a product to change. If that change is very significant, you need to change, get another performa invoice. The reason is this. When you are doing for me in Nigeria, you are actually supposed to attach an insurance certificate that have a a minimum cover of 110%. And remember, the insurance certificate is to protect what you are importing to ensure that if anything happens in transit, you are not... Um, if anything happens in transit, you are not... Um, you don't have to run at a loss. Because, remember, it's possible it's later of credit transaction, government have used our ad and forex to pay on your behalf. <laughs> government has used our ad and forex to pay on your behalf. If government has done that, you really cannot afford to waste that foreign exchange. If the government have done that, you really cannot afford to waste that foreign exchange. As a result of that, as a result of that, you need to insure one and ten percent. Now, that one and ten percent you insure also makes it possible for you to pay your invoice over about one and ten percent. So, if my invoice value is hundred thousand dollars. And the amount of good I shipped in is one hundred nine thousand dollars. I'm allowed to pay the one hundred nine thousand dollars. It's still under the one hundred ten percent of my formem value. What am I basically saying? I'm basically saying that three months is enough for the price to change beyond ten percent. Because if after three months you've not used it for me, uh, for members to print the formem, and you're not asking for it to be used, it will be rejected. Why? It is now a staled performa invoice. It's not new. It's staled performa invoice. Why do we say it's staled? It's staled because the price must have changed. If it has not changed, then get us a new one. If the new one shows the same, fine, we we'll go ahead and process. There's no reason why you should be keeping for men performa invoice for three months without using it. It's a sign that you probably are not even ready for that transaction. Because this will have been touched through at the beginning, which is why anybody going to importation, it will be great for you to find this video online and listen to it and just listen to it and just listen to it. There's so much you will be learning. There's so much. And that's why I'm, I'm already preparing for AFCFTA, actually. I'm preparing for <laughs> I'm preparing for AFCFTA in the sense that because after this, I will not be talking about AFCFT and I'll be taking each of the products in AFCFT one by one. One by one. So I'll be talking then to Nigerians to take advantage of AFCFT. Now I'm taking I'm talking about Africans. Come and take advantage of Nigerian market or the AFCFT. <laughs> that's what I'm saying now. And that's one of the things I want to do. When, when, when I finish this series, then we'll begin to talk to different um, Africans. Telling them, look, um, it's so important, it's so important for Africa to take advantage of Nigerian market. For Nigeria to take advantage of African market. It's so important because that's the only way we can grow. 
That's the only way we can grow. That's the only way we can grow. If we don't do that, we will not be able to grow. And if we don't grow this economy, if we don't grow this economy, if we don't grow this economy, <laughs> we're going to create jobs. We're going to remain in poverty in Africa. So AFCFT is the way to go, no doubt about it. So pro forma invoice. You need to ensure that means if I want to process today is what? Today is 26th of September 2019. If I'm processing for MEM today, my performance invoice should be like May, June, July, August. No, June. July, August, September. So June, anything before June 26 will not be allowed. Any performance invoice before June 26 will not be allowed to process for FOMEM. Why? It is more than 90 days old. It is more than 90 days old. So if I have a May 30 performance invoice, it's tilled. But if I have August 30 performance invoice, is good enough. July 30, June 30, they are all good enough. Any date between June 26 and today are perfect. Are perfect. Are perfect. Number six, all goods to be imported into Nigeria shall be labeled in English. All goods to be imported into Nigeria shall be labeled in English. All goods to be imported into Nigeria shall be labeled in English. Why? Because, because, we speak English in Nigeria, and English is not Luga Franca. And we need to be sure of what you are bringing into Nigeria. We need to be sure of what you are bringing. In the sense that, are you bringing good we can consume or the one we cannot consume? We need to be sure of what you are bringing into Nigeria. That's why you can only bring into Nigeria. Only bring into Nigeria an item that is labeled in English. If it's not labeled in English, that will not be acceptable. Why? It is not labeled in English. It is not labeled in English. But we speak English in Nigeria. So how do we know what you put inside? How do you know what it contains? How do you know the value to us if it's not labeled in English? Number seven. Importation of goods and LC issuance can only be done after Form M must have been accepted by the Nigerian Customs Service. When your form M is yet to be accepted by the Nigerian Customs Service, importation of your goods, opening of LC is illegal. For the banks, you can only open what is often called a, a um, you can only open what is often called a pre how do you call it now? You can only open what is often called a pre pre advice. <laughs> you can only open what is often called a pre advice. Pre advice. You, if it's not a pre advice, you can't open it. In the sense that, and some banks will not even open pre advice because pre advice means you see, are going to issue the Asha LC after the form has been issued and put the form number on it. So some people not even open pre advice, but that's the only time you can open a pre advice. In Nigeria. And so that's the only time you can open LC before for in Nigeria. I'm basically saying that for you to import into Nigeria, and because a lot of people are coming into this space, a lot of people are doing businesses and we require them importing machinery. So you don't even have to be a regular importer to know about importing into Nigeria. That the fact that you you might find yourself importing just anything tomorrow for your business, for your company, for whatever it is. So for me, this particular segment that I'll be doing today in the morning and in the evening and probably tomorrow is of extreme importance to anyone who wants to import into Nigeria, especially those that are Nigerians. And if you're not Nigerian, that's great. That's okay. If you're not Nigerian, that's great. That's okay. But you want Nigeria market, so you need to learn about this. <laughs> and lastly, before I go this morning, Items such as food, drinks, drugs, 
chemicals shall carry expiry date. Shall carry expiry date. Um, and a minimum shelf life of half of the shelf life. If you are bringing any food, drug, drinks, chemical, it will have a shelf life, and a minimum shelf life is half. So if your if the shelf life of your product is two years, and you are bringing it in by next month, by the time it's entering Nigeria, it must have not have uh, utilized up to 50% of that shelf life. That means is you should be importing into Nigeria what was recently produced. Such that you have not utilized the expiry date has not gone halfway already. If it has gone beyond halfway or beyond halfway, that will not be allowed. That will not be allowed. That will not be allowed. That will not be allowed in Nigeria. Thank you very much for listening to me again this morning. My name is Dila Yimiba and this import export platform, Facebook Live from Tree Media Academy. Sincerely, this is one of the most important video you want to. If you are watching this video, this FD2040, is it 42 now? One of the, it's going to be one of the most important video. I'm going to be completing it in the evening, but sincerely, it's going to be one of the most important video that if you can just master this, it will help you and guide you in the course of importing your item into Nigeria. It will save you money, save you headache, save you hassle, save you losses that you can incur or delays you might even incur in the course of trying to import your item into Nigeria. So please, let's share this video with as many people as possible who might be interested in having a taste of the Nigerian market. Thank you very much for listening. See you in the evening and bye for now. <laughs>